everyone, Comic Reviewer here, this time reviewing on Justice League Unlimited, issue number 9. Now, as you know, Justice League Unlimited had its own comic book series that follows a different continuity from the TV series. So, the, the cover has Morgan Le Fray pretty much taking down the Justice League, and let's get on the story. It starts off mainly how the Just League members are accompanying Shining Knight back into the past. And where you've got Red Tornado, Firestorm, Caddy Madam, Ray Palmer, also Green Lantern and all that. And pretty much Black Canary asks, are you okay Vixen? But points out that, you know, since she's meant to be a former fashion model and that turned superhero, she pretty much feels that she doesn't really have a place um, bound against more, pretty much, is kind of old hat to her. And so she pretty much points out about Shining Knight, how he pretty much saved Merlin from a curse and was granted powers and his horse was giving wings and was pretty and was pretty much frozen in ice by an ogre, and even helped the Justice, the All-Star Squadron, in their battle against World War II. Now, I know there's going to be Green Arrow in there, and this does kind of make it seem like Green Arrow's quite older, but I guess this does imply that this is a different Green Arrow than the one in the TV series, and even joining the Justice League in helping them against Morgan Le Fay in the past. And even points out how he, that Fixin is a key to helping in their mission, even though her totem is connected to certain animals, and it's only one animal at a time. So pretty much they head straight into the past, where you've got King Arthur's forces against the Black Knight. And where they are meeting by King Arthur saying, Perhaps you could fill us in on what we're doing here, Your Highness. It is Logan Le Fay and her foul Magrix who has made you something necessary, Superman. And points out that, yeah, basically, she recruited Black Knights from different times and moments and having herself an army. And what's interesting, it's even implied by King Arthur's wife that Sir Lancelot might be the ancestor of Bruce Wayne, hinting a possible family connection. <laughs> so, pretty much they point out that they do have a magic barrier against Morgan Le Fay's forces, but need a just lead to help pre prevent, uh, prevent them from breaking in. So, pretty much they get their heavy leaguers, and pretty much as Vixen tries to fly off, pretty much... Merlin has to stay behind, knowing she has a key purpose, and says, You are meant for greater things. And pretty much the Justice League help take down certain things, the Black Knights, and Sir Lancelot says, Splendid showing, oh good sir. I, Sir Lancelot, could have done no better. I say a rather resemblance between us, what? Shame kin, do I believe? And yeah, this does imply they're related. And Green Lantern pretty much takes on some Black Knights in a fancy armour. <laughs> so, pretty much Morgan Le Fay isn't happy, but says, Foul does Morgan Le Fay eliminate her greatest enemies of today, but also the knights of the far future that may one day oppose her. So, pretty much Merlin has... Fix and come with him. So, just as she's pretty much getting annoyed and runs off, Merlin points out that her totem isn't just connected to animals of the present, or certain animals, but animals that have and can been. And pretty much, due to Superman's no, no magic policy, Black Canary has to try and limit down the herd. But the Just League get quickly overpowered. And just as Merlin does point out about the totem, he also shows to her 
what they need, and it's a mystical dragon, and her being the kind of, like, key in ingredient. And just as the Justice League are about to be defeated, Vixen shows up in her dragon-like form and kicks some ass, and presumably burning down Morgan Le Fay. So, in the end, King Arthur and that congratulate the Justice League, and pretty much Merlin saying, and then they must believe it for themselves. And yeah, this is the story. So, issue eight... So issue 9 isn't too bad. I think it's interesting as a story and could have been an interesting episode for Just League Unlimited. And it's a shame that Etrigan couldn't come as well and kind of help fixing with her story. I know that, yeah, continuity in that. So I think the issue deserves a thumbs up. Still good and still alright. So, comic reviewer here, signing out.